Hello everyone, and welcome back. It's time for another story from our friend Pantheon Fay. This is the tale of Cyrus. Tiny Dick Energy. <laughs> That's a good name. I'm excited already. Here we go. Greetings, my fellow members of the Moon Herd. Hi, Uncle Moonhorse. Hi, Lamoda. Thank you again for the support for my previous stories. It makes me happy to know that I'm not the only one who thought that these people were clinically insane. And I know you've all been asking how I could have put up with it for that long. Well, what I lack in intelligence, I make up for impatience. We all know why you're here. You were waiting for the moment that I finally snap and tore Cyrus a new asshole and left him crying, broken, and alone. Well, I'm here to tell you that's not exactly what happened. You see, Cyrus broke up with me. Yeah, you heard that right. In this story, I committed a deal-breaker that ultimately ended the relationship. So, as previously stated, Cyrus and his family would have a bitch fit whenever the topic of myself and my lack of education came up. Seriously, these people would have a full-blown conversation about me not applying myself in school, and ultimately ruining my future because of it. So finally, enough was enough, and I lied. I told them I signed up for classes to become a CNA which was what I was being pressured to do in the first place. I had to get them off my back somehow. Once the words were out, suddenly the room changed. Everyone was congratulating me like I'd won the Nobel Prize. It was the first time in a long time that I felt even remotely part of this family. I was suddenly invited out to lunch dates by his mother. Cyrus started taking me out on more dates and bought me things for no reason. His father even invited me over to the house to teach me how to follow football. He's a big fan, so we could watch it together. I suddenly became the belle of the ball, and all it cost was my fucking integrity. So after about a month of lying, there came a knock on my door one morning when I was supposed to be at class. I looked at my phone, and there was a message that read, I'm downstairs, come down here right now. So I got dressed and went downstairs. There stood Cyrus and his father on my property, uninvited, at 8 a.m. Cyrus stood there bawling while Orlando stood behind him, hand on his shoulder. Why aren't you at school? What's going on? I stayed quiet, the knot in my stomach causing a mild panic attack. I can't believe you lied to me. Mom and Dad kept telling me you were lying, but I don't want to believe it. I drove by your house the last three weeks and saw your car here and you showed me the pictures. Are you even working at insert job? I recently just left for job number four without telling him. Yeah, no, I'm not. I know, but Mom called your previous jobs to see how long you worked there and when you worked there. You left that job two weeks ago. You didn't even tell me. My parents are pissed at you. What? The fuck? That is creepy as shit. <sighs> you are no longer welcome in our house. Good luck in whatever future you can find in the gutter, you'll need it. Really? Really? Orlando proceeded to walk back to his car. I mean, I bought you a ring and everything. Why did you have to fuck everything up? What else have you been lying to me about? Are you seeing someone? Why'd you do it? <sighs> the pressure was too much, Cyrus. I'm sorry. Oh, that's just bullshit excuse. My family's been nothing but kind to you. Oh. Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, bullshit. No. Uh-uh. I almost left. His family stalked me and called my employers to see when and how long I had worked at my previous jobs. And now technically trespassing on private property. So kind. Well, I have to go to work. We will meet later and talk about this some more. So he left, and I went back upstairs and sat on the bed. And I cried. At first I was hurt, but after a while my tears were happy. I never felt such an amazing sense of freedom in all my life. He didn't say it was over, but I knew it was. I was ecstatic. So that afternoon came and Cyrus told me he would meet me at a park. Oh, how dramatic. So I drove to a nearby park and there stood Cyrus. I got out of my car. And as I did, I saw Batshit get out of the vehicle. Oh boy, here we go. Yes, Batshit had to drive Cyrus to our breakup and now be part of it. <sighs> oh no. I turned around and started walking back to the car. Cyrus actually grabbed me and pulled me away from the car towards his mother. Yes, physically grabbed me and dragged me. 
punch him in the neck. That's my advice. We all sat down at a table under a gazebo. Well, Bob just wants a few words with you. Why would you ever care? No. And if you grab me like that again, I'm going to call the cops. Don't you dare. Young lady, I've put up with enough of your antics and I'm tired of you hurting my baby boy. I swear she forgets that she actually has two children all the time. You robbed him of his time and our time with him. Really? Really? You cost him money he will never see again and I think he deserves better. <sighs> when I was getting upset. Just because you had a hard life doesn't give you a reason to treat people the way you have treated him. Oh, fuck off. I used to have a hard life too. I seriously doubt that. I was a lot like you. I was living on the streets, doing drugs, and selling myself to every Tom, Dick, and Harry willing to pay. I really doubt that. But because I was a good person, I got the opportunity to meet Orlando. You messed up an opportunity to have a great man like him. I guess I just want to know why I treated you like my own daughter. Before we finish this, let's just recap real quickly. Treated you like my own daughter. Constantly told you how you weren't good at any of the things that you did. Belittled every sense of respect that you had about yourself. And when you were sick, you literally threw her out of the house. That's how you treat your kids, huh? Hell, I'd hate to see how you treat an enemy. I'm just hurt. I gave you chance after chance and you disappoint me every time. Maybe it's for the best. You could never make him happy like a real woman could. Are you are you implying that are you implying that you want to date your own son? Cuz that's what it sounds like. <laughs> With that, that shit left and went back to her car and left me there with Cyrus to process what was just said. Yeah, she basically put me on the same level as a drug-dealing whore in her mind that was in the middle of being rescued from my awful life by her amazing son. <sighs> Bob's right, you know. You have any idea how you affected my family? Think about my brother. You're the only girl he can really talk to outside of the family. And whose fault is that? You ruined everything. You really need to get your shit together. Once you do, I'm sure we can be together again. My parents will probably forgive you once you make something of yourself. Punch him in the neck. Finally, the moment you were waiting for. I snapped. Do it. Oh, I've ruined everything? Well, allow me to finish what I've started, shall I? Let me just pop this delusional bubble of yours. Your family is made up of the most hateful, hypocritical assholes I've ever met. The idea of having a future with a man who's practically in an incestuous relationship with his mother makes me want to vomit. You make my fucking skin crawl. No wonder your ex left you. I wish I would have had the good sense to do so sooner. You raped me physically and emotionally, and I hope to God you and your awful family go straight to hell where you belong. I highly doubt your father can buy your family that kind of salvation, but I'd love to be there to watch you try. You're not even asking for another chance. Is it because of my dick? Is it not big enough? So don't go out and date a black guy. I laughed right in his face. This asshat thought I was going to beg for another chance. And when I didn't, it was obviously because of his penis. It was like he didn't hear a word that I said to him. Yeah, he's, he's totally nuts. No, I'm not going to ask for another chance. I am relieved this is over. You are a disgusting person. And I'm worth more than that. As for who I date in the future, that's not really any of your business. Oh god, you're gonna go date a black guy, aren't you? I knew it was small. I don't have words. I don't have words for how pathetic that is. I just... I... Ah. Cyrus? Yeah. It really is small.
<laughs> Got him. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the last thing I ever said to Cyrus. It has been five months since the breakup, and I've been doing quite a few things with my life. First, I've picked writing back up, and I've been working on a book that I let fall to the side while dating Cyrus. Second, I'm saving up money to go to school to become a vet tech. That's right, I'm actually going back to school. And last, I'm actually dating my high school crush. He's kind and thoughtful and super supportive of my writing. He's helpful and reliable. Seriously, I could gush about this guy for hours. Anyway, that ends the saga of Cyrus. I hope you enjoyed it. I have other stories of other exes that were almost as bad as him, but none really measure up to him and his family. Thank you to the community and Moonhorse for the love and support. Until next time. Oh, my goodness gracious. What can I say? I'm, I'm perfectly... I'm sorry, I got distracted. I looked down at one of the comments, and one of the comments was, Did he cry? I hope he cried. And the reply was, Yeah, the whole time. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I know, I know. Moon Horus, you're supposed to be positive and nice and not, you know, celebrate the horrors that are certain people and celebrate the terrible things that happen to certain people. Catharsis, I don't care. This was totally worth it. This guy was legitimately a fucking monster. And the fact that you basically picked up arms and slayed the wicked beast like the little bastard he is makes me ten kinds of proud of you. I am so fucking happy right now. It was absolutely worth it. Sometimes you just have to indulge those evil intentions, kids. Especially when it's dealing with evil people. Lord knows that they're not going to give you an inch, so you might as well never give them one either. But maybe that's just me. There are people who can forgive and forget, and you're a better person than me. I'm, you know, just a little evil. That's what happens when you live on the moon. It's a cold and dark place, and sometimes you have to destroy things. Don't ask how I got here. Anyway, I am so very happy that you're in a better place, and I really think that you should pick up all the things that that... that tiny, willy little pissant decided to take away from you. And on a side note, well, kind of a side note, is it, is it wrong that I kind of hope he finds these videos? Because I kind of hope he does. <laughs> I kind of hope that he learns there is an entire community laughing at his tiny willy and his terrible, terrible personality and his weirdly incestuous relationship with his mother. That's fucking gross. That is just, that, that presses all the note buttons on my fucking console. Just all the note buttons. It presses all the note buttons and I don't like it. So thank you all for watching and I hope you enjoyed this wonderful, wonderful story. I know I enjoyed reading it to you. If you have a story you'd like to send me, you can do that by going to r slash moonhorse stories and posting it there. I check it every day, so I will see it. And if you'd like to keep the lights on in this place so I can keep doing this and reading you wonderful stories like this, you can do that by donating to Patreon or by buying stuff in the merch store. Much like PBS, I am only kept available by viewers like you. I was, I was going to put in a thing, but I decided against it. Anyway, I love you all, and I'll see you in the next episode. Okay, goodbye.